All right, we are going to get started. We're mindful of your time today. So again, thank you all so very much for joining us on this AnyLine webinar. Today, we're going to be talking about our world's first technology, a mobile tire tread scanner. Uh, we'll give you an overview of the solution and give you a live demo as well. So lots to look forward to uh, in this presentation. And again, thank you all so much for joining us. My name is Mark Babin. I'm the creative director here at AnyLine and I'll be moderating this discussion today. I'm joined by my colleagues, Philip Parr and Christian Dale, our solution expert and product marketing manager. A, a few uh, housekeeping notes before we get started, just a quick one for you. We want to encourage conversation during this webinar. So at the bottom of your screen, you're gonna see a Q&A button. If you wanna submit questions, which we certainly encourage, go ahead and click on that panel and you'll be able to submit your questions to us. You can do so with your name or anonymously, however you choose. Just be mindful that if we don't have time to get to everyone's question today and you submitted anonymously, we won't be able to get back in touch with you. So at your own discretion, but just so you're aware that that's an option for you. And with that, we will get started on this presentation. So let's learn more about a mobile tire tread scanner. Christian, Philip, over to you. Thank you, Mark, uh, for the introduction. Um, I want to start off the webinar by talking about a, a huge opportunity that we see in the market, especially for companies that are in the business of selling tires. So, and I'll explain right now why that is a, a huge opportunity. So, we know that there are at least 5.7 billion tires on the road today. That's, uh, we know that at least. Um, and we also know, according to a study, that 27% of tires are either defective or outright uh, dangerous. And that leaves us with 1.5 billion tires that should be changed um, right now. And if a company is able to identify those tires and charge an average, average price of 150 uh, euros per tire, then they are able to tap into this huge 231 billion uh, market. Now, on one side, that's an opportunity if you're selling tires, but it could also be a problem if you're in a company that you know manages a lot of vehicles and you need to make sure that the, the tires are safe for both your customers, but also your employees. So it depends on how you look at it, whether it's an opportunity or problem, um, but that's just very important to keep in mind. And what we see is that a lot of companies, they really struggle with recording and digitizing tread depth efficiently. And that is uh, because, as you can see on the picture, this person is um, doing it manually with a tread depth gauge. And that takes a lot of time. And it doesn't let that uh, person and that company service as many customers as they should. And so what we did at Anyline, we created a mobile tire tread scanner that captures all that data in seconds. And that is important for you as a company because that allows you to sell more tires, but also ensure legal compliance and also overcome labor challenges. Because we know that there is a shortage of tire technicians on the market right now, and that puts a lot of pressures on the existing ones right now. Um, but it also you know, prevents them from servicing more uh, cars. And imagine now if they had a tool that could speed up that process, that would make their life so much uh, better. Now, when we deep dive into why tire tread measurement is broken, like the old way of doing things, we see uh, especially three things. So the first one is that if you're using these manual tread depth gauges, you will get very inconsistent results uh, depending on who's using it. So five different people will get five different results. And once you've done the measurement, the second problem is then that you still have to write down the numbers on a piece of paper, for example, and then bring that to a computer and then type it in, in the system. And so uh, if you're looking out in the market today to combat those problems, you will find very expensive stationary machines that can cost somewhere between 50,000 to 100,000 uh, euros or, or dollars, or you also have these expensive handheld devices. So uh, with those problems, uh, Philip, my colleague now is gonna talk about the solution. Absolutely. Um, thank you very much. i um, also very happy to uh, speak to you. So my name is Philip, um, and I would like to um, tell you a bit more about the technology. Um, later on, I will also give it in a live demonstration of our solution. Uh, what we did uh, at AnyLine is we looked at tire tread scanning from a different approach. 
So we are a company on the market, which is already developing mobile data capturing solutions since uh, 10 years. And we have seen that, especially in the automotive aftermarket, reading the tire tread information is very crucial, but it lacks this easy, how, how easy it should be in order to record and put it into the right system. And what we did is we wanted to make a tire tread scanning solution available, the same as all our other data capturing solutions. And that means mobile first, using mobile device for measuring the result and immediately transferring into the right system. And the other very important point is we, we want to be device agnostic. We want to use a plain camera in order to read the tire tread uh, depth. And that's a breakthrough innovation. That's brand new on the market and that's world first because there's no one else on the market that can actually use um, the, the, the typical hardware, the normal hardware of a smartphone or mobile device to read the tire tread. And that's what we have developed and we are proud to bring to the market. So what that means for you is that with a, with a normal device that you may or maybe not already have in your system or available for your workforce, you can now get reliable results for tire tread scanning immediately. You can, you can prevent any kind of manual data entry and you can basically roll it out on thousands of devices with the easiness of any kind of mobile application. So how does this actually work? It works in three simple steps. The first step is you scan the tire. That uh, works in a way that you swipe from one side to the other side. It then gets transferred to a server and you get immediately the results. The results can then be compiled in any kind of way that you like. So you get the data, you get the millimeters for the tire tread depth, and you can then, as you can see here on the slide on the right-hand side, you can then make a report out of it, where you can, for example, use a traffic light system, and you can show a green, yellow, red based on your thresholds. Um, you can even uh, make a report that includes all the four tires. And you can make a customer facing report, including a 3D dev map, where a customer can see a very detailed diagnostic from their tires. Yeah, so in a nutshell, what we help you um, at AnyLine is uh, three specific things with our tread depth scanner. So one, we help you sell more tires because we are able now to detect recalled or defective tires instantly. The second thing is that we will help you improve compliance and reduce legal risks. And also lastly, increase efficiency and overcome labor challenges. As I mentioned, there is a shortage of tire technicians out in the market. And um, you know, if they had a tool that helps them work faster, then they will be able to do their job more efficiently. So we did a comparison uh, between manual data entry and the new way of working with the AnyLine solution. And what we see at the manual data entry, at least uh, the workforce employee uh, needs to take 30 seconds, if not longer. That is already very optimistic because when you look deeper into the processes, as this is not a convenient way at the moment how to measure the results, you often have double work. So you have at one point in time when you're at the tire, in many cases, pen and paper, you have, you use the manual tire tread dev gauche to read the results, you put it down on a paper, and then you need it in your system. So then you're going into the back office to the stationary computer and entering the system, uh, entering the, the numbers in the system. And if you're doing this, you will take far longer than um, half a minute. But even if you're just using the manual tire tread dev gauche to read the results, it takes longer and it's not that accurate because it's a point measurement, whereas we, and I will show it then in the live demonstration, are using a video stream with a far broader uh, measuring zone. Any line tire tread scanning, on the other hand, works in, in, in the end within 10 seconds. And that includes not only displaying the results to the, the user who is actually performing the tire tread dev scanning, that means after 10 seconds, it's already in the system available for everyone that needs to use this information. Exactly. And because we are so much faster, we can uh, save you a lot of hours and also a lot of money because you will be able to uh, reduce your, your wage uh, for your workers. And with that extra amount of 
of hours that you're saving, if you are to put that into servicing more vehicles, for example, you can also, of course, then generate more revenue. So at the first slide, I, I said AnyLine is on the market since uh, 10 years and we developed mobile data capturing solutions. With this slide, I would like to show you what we have specifically de developed in, in your industry that, um, that is maybe also useful in combination. So actually, over the last years, we have developed technical sc uh, scanning capabilities for almost everything around the car, the tire, and the driver. So let's start with the tire. Now we have the tire thread scanning on the right-hand side. On the left-hand side, uh, you see tire sidewall. So we are also able to capture, again, with the mobile device, opening up the camera, pointing to the information, the DOT number and the tire size. So no more manual data entry of those two items if you're needing them in your system. The next is the car. So you can identify the car through very various items. We have license plate scanning solutions for the uh, biggest regions. So here you see, for example, Europe and US. Um, we have the vehicle identification number scanner. And vehicle identification number scanner, we are specifically proud of that we are able to read the VIN number behind the windshield. So mirroring, um, reflections, this is all our solution is um, able to tackle and give you back the right result. By the way, how does this work? through machine learning models. So we use millions of training data to read all those items that you see here so that we can confidently give you back an accurate result. We, of course, also have a barcode scanning solution. And you can also read the VIN, uh, for example, from certificates. Talking, talking about certificates on the up, uh, upper right corner of this slide, uh, you see two documents that we are also able to capture, the vehicle registration certificate, and we can also read driver licenses. So in a nutshell, we can identify everything around the tire, the car, and even the driver. And the good thing about this is it's one SDK. You can integrate it into your mobile application, and that empowers your typical mobile devices that you have already in use in your company to be a very um, accurate um, tire and car diagnostic tool. Great. Um, now we're going to go over to a demonstration. So Philip is going to um, show you how the AnyLine Tire Tread Scanner works. And uh, we're going to be uh, setting things up. So just give us a few seconds here. Perfect. So um, first of all, now I've moved to the other side of the, the room. Uh, we have uh, prepared here a demonstration setup. Um, so we have, you can see here, two tires. We have two different type of tires. We have a worn out tire, and we have a tire with a good tire tread there. And what I would like to show you is, I would like to show you um, on both of the tires, um, how good the tire tread scanner is actually working. And I will show it in the way that I will, first of all, use the mobile uh, application that we have developed, demo application, and the manual tire tread. Um, of course, all this is available also for, for you. In case you're interested, please reach out to us, and we are happy to provide you a demo application so that you can try it out on your own hardware in your own environment. And you can see yourself how good the accuracy is. So let me start with the first tire. What you can see here is the demo application that we are also shipping right now to interested, interested customers. In the end, when you're interested, interested to integrate this into your own application, we will ship you a software development kit. And we will, of course, also help you to integrate it so that it's needlessly integrated in your applications. And there is no separated process. Everything is in, in one application available. So I will press now start. And the first thing that you will actually see is it opens up the camera and it gives me back visual feedback and acoustic feedback uh, th that tells me if I'm close enough uh, to the tire. So I will start with this. Yes, it's okay. And I will do the first measurement. Yes, it's okay. Yes, it's okay. Yes, it's okay. 
So specifically, the acoustic feedback is super important. If um, a user doesn't uh, want to look at the display, he's, he or she still knows that, that uh, it's the right distance to the tire. So what happens now is it basically sends the images to the server, the server process the information, and in the end, we get back the result. You here also not see just the results. You also see um, a traffic light indicator that here is uh, coded as yellow. Of course, this is all customizable. So we see the results here on one hand, and now I'm taking the manual tire thread of gauche, and we will do a first measurement. So you can also come a bit closer here. The first measure measurement is 3.36. And we can see here 3.2. Of course, this is a point measurement. So when I'm measuring at another point, like in that case, it's 3.12. And I try to take exactly the scope that we have used for reading the tire to showcase you that this is the better way to actually measure the tire thread depth because you don't only rely on one point. You have a region where we are actually measuring the tire thread depth. And by the way, we are also segmenting the tire in three segments and you will, will give you back three different results based on the tire thread depth that we have detected. So let me just uh, do another example. The, another one is 3.67 and that's the middle one, 3.5. So there you can also already see how accurate the solution uh, is performing. So now let's, uh, go to the next tire, uh, which has a better tire thread. Um, I, I just before I do the measurement, I would like to show you how the UI behaves. So you can hear decrease distance and it, it already measures based on the focus, how you should actually hold the device. So it's very easy for someone to use it, even if you're using it the first time. And that's the principle that we are using for all our um, software solutions. We want to make it as easy as possible. We have even integrated our solutions on websites, for example, customers are using it the first time to reach the tire size information and they are using and um, they are using it the first time and get the right result. So here you can see um, the next one you, and what I would like to showcase you here in this quick demonstration is um, you on one side on, on one side see already the tire thread here is better and it also the traffic light indicates this. So I would like to also do a measurement here in that case. So let me just show you the first one here, 6.29. We have uh, between 6.5 and 6.6. .6. And when I'm doing just another one, 6.1 and 6.57, which is already very close to the result. The last thing I would like to show you is I have, um, I have told you at the beginning that we are also able to compile reports. Of course, this can be done um, with all the information that we, are do, that we are retrieving through the scanning, and this is very detailed. So what you can see here is, you can see here the global result, left, middle, and right, and you even get back a heat map where you can see exactly the same pattern of what we have actually scanned and the identification of how we have we, how we were able uh, to measure the right tire thread. And just to wrap up from a technical point of view, how does this all work behind? So technically it, there are happening three steps. The first step is through this movement, we are detecting the edges of the tire. So we know the width of the tire. The second uh, step is we are using machine learning models to identify the patterns so that we really know where to actually read the tire thread depth. And then based of the, out of the movement of the, of the phone, we get different frames from different angles and that help us to then calculate the right tire thread depth. If you're also interested in seeing how this is actually working in your environment on your devices, please reach out to us. I'm happy to also give you an individual demonstration to uh, ship you a demo application 
and of course also discuss with you anything around integration topics. Thank you very much. Great, Philip, thank you so much. Uh, we're now gonna start with uh, the Q and A and I'm just gonna let my colleague uh, Mark uh, get ready. And as soon as you are Mark, just let me. Perfect, yeah, we yeah. are ready to go. Thank you so much both for the great presentation and that live demonstration. It's always great to see the technology in action like that. So again, thank you, Philip and Christian. And thank you all so much for submitting your questions. We have a ton. So we'll try our best to, best to get through all of them. Uh, but if again, if we don't, uh, we'll be in touch with you directly and we'll give our contact information just at the very end and you can reach out to us that way. So first question that came through was, will this work on any brand of tire? Philip Christian, do you wanna answer that for us? Yes. Um, so um, at the moment, the models are trained on passenger tires. Um, all models are supported, winter tires and summer tires. Um, we are also at the moment develop uh, for um, a commercial tires a script so that in the end, we can also read the tires from trucks. So short answer is yes. Perfect. Thank you very much, Philip. Uh, we had another question come through asking, would your app link with retailers DMS or EVH? C systems, or does the user have to scan with the normal device and app then type into the system still to apply this data to the job card? Yeah, so that's a, that's a super important question. Um, so the way how the integration works is, so we can be integrated in any kind of Android or iOS application. Uh, and from that point on, you have the data available and you can um, put it in any kind of system that you like depending on how open the system is. So if there are APIs from your DMS, you can basically um, use the APIs to transmit the data in the right system. If they are stored in a database, you can just uh, simply um, add, insert them into the database. That is something we can uh, look on, a, on, a, on, on in your specific environment because that differs. But the way how AnyLine is designed is very open. So as we are basically an SDK that outputs um, just the numbers and the information in an app, we can basically uh, write the information um, wherever you need it. Perfect. Thank you very much, Philip, for that. All right. Another question came through. I think this is a great question as well. Is it possible to use the solution when the tire is dirty with mud or snow, for example? What's the typical accuracy in millimeters of our measurements? I know we touched on this, Philip. Perhaps you can elaborate on this question for us. Absolutely. So um, at the moment, uh, we are still until end of this month in an early adopter program. And what we did is we selected a couple of early customers uh, worldwide, also in mind to get the information of different tire conditions. So we have, for example, uh, customers in Canada where there are uh, snowy tires. We have, um, of course, through the winter season collected a lot of mud tires. And our intention is that we make our solution as robust as possible. Um, of course, if you have a tire that, that is completely covered with snow and there is no DEF inf information available, uh, our solution can't uh, read the DEF. But you, you couldn't also read the DEF information with a manual tire tread gosh. So there is no advantage uh, from other systems. But the way how we are working is we, we are using the full, um, the full side of the video uh, and, and that and allows us to read on more information than just on one point. And that's where we can filter out noise and trying to still get a good result. That's an advantage to a manual tire tread um, gauge where you are relying on a, on a point measurement. So uh, in, in short, um, it depends on how dirty or how snowy it is, but we are really pushing the edges of also getting their uh, good results. Perfect, great answer, Phil. Thank you very much. Do you measure the width of the tire as well? I think we answered this during the demo, uh, but Philip, anything further to answer on that or Christian? Uh, yes, so uh, we are, we are uh, calculating the width of the tire when we are um, moving from one side to the other side. Of course, if you need the width in your system, uh, we can also give uh, provide you the tire dimension scanner 
on the side wall. And that is the information that you're maybe looking for uh, when you want to replace the tire or you want to just simply add it to your customer record because that's then uh, um, uh, very accurate. And it gives you not only um, the width of the tire, it gives you the full dimension uh, factors like speed index, load index, and, and so on. Great, thank you very much for that. Uh, we had a question about security uh, as far as data. So what level of security does the app have if you're capturing the level of personal data under GDPR? That's uh, also a very good um, uh, question. So thank you for this. Uh, so uh, it's a server-based solution, the tire thread dev scanner, and uh, we are just submitting the tire uh, data. So just from one side to the other side of the tire. We don't submit any personal data or any records that, where you could identify the driver. Um, that's very important for us. And that's also the reason why the products that could be used from the AnyLine portfolio to identify a person, those are fully offline. So for example, um, the driver license is a um, solution uh, where the whole processing runs on the device and there is no server connection needed for scanning the data. So we don't get that information. We also don't get the information from if you are using the license plate scanner or the vehicle identification number scanner. Those are also processing on the device offline. So no GDPR topic at all. In terms of the tire thread dev scanner, that's a server-based solution. By the way, it's also the reason why this is a server-based solution is because there is a lot of heavy lifting that can't be done on the device itself. That's the reason why we are using um, uh, high computational units in the cloud. Um, but this information that we are submitting there is just the, uh, the images of the tire. Perfect, great answer. Thank you very much. Is there any challenging tire pattern for the solution is a question we had come through. Um, so uh, it, it, this is an on, honest answer, of course. There always are challenging uh, uh, patterns and we encounter them. The more it's used, then there are also some patterns that um, need to be retrained. Retrained is the, is, the, is the keyword I would like to mention here. As this is a machine learning model and it learns over time, it gets better and better, even if there are um, patterns that are at the moment uh, challenging. Um, but to be uh, to assure you, it already works on 90, 95 percent of all the, the the patterns. So we're really talking about exotic ones in the case where we are doing a retraining, and then in the end, through retraining, uh, we can we are also able to solve those. And then along the same line of questioning, we had a question come through asking, does the machine learning handle all season tires, which tend not to have the same clear tread grooves? as summer tires as per the demo we just gave? Uh, yes, this is also part of, um, of the scope. Absolutely, yeah. Perfect, great. Uh, we had a question come through about damage to the side of the tire. Can the tire sidewall solution capture damage to the sidewall as well as the tire spec? So tire damages is something we are looking into, but we don't provide it at the moment. So at the moment, it's the tire sidewall information and tire thread depth. If you have a use case where tire damages are interesting, uh, please uh, reach out to me. I'm, I'm happy to also investigate into this. In the end, it would be also a machine learning model that identifies the, the, the damages, but it's all about what kind of damages you would need to classify. And then uh, we can see how, how the solution um, could also tackle this. Perfect. Uh, we had a question come through about the measurements and the spec. So is it consistent that we retrieve a sub millimeter measurement as we did in the demo? Yes. So um, the accuracy that we are aiming for is 0 0.1. We don't get this uh, accuracy um, throughout all the scans on all the devices. We have a couple of devices where we are uh, where, where we already achieved this. Um, that depends on the hardware you're using, and the, uh, we are happy also to investigate into the hardware that you're, you're using, how we can actually uh, bring this to 0 0.1 millimeters. But that's the goal. So that's what we uh, that's what we want to deliver. Great. We had a question about non-cloud-based applications. I think, Simon, you, you touched on that earlier, that the tire sidewall solution is 
obviously using a server, but our other solutions that relate to the sidewall, the VIN scan and the license plate are all done on device and used as uh, you wish. Anything further to add on that point, Philip? Uh, uh, yes, please. So um, in the end, everything that is text is something that can be processed on the device. So even challenging text cases like the DOT number or the tire size is something we can process on the device and that's fully offline. Um, the only reason why we need a server is when we need when we want to understand the, the depth of the tire tread, and that's uh, through a statistical calculation, which needs a lot of heavy lifting. Perfect. Great. Thank you so much for adding to that. Uh, are we uploading the full video from the mobile device, or are we uploading specific frames? What's the process there, Philip? Yeah, so we are we are not uploading the full video. We are uploading frames. So we also want to um, to keep the stress on the bandwidth as low as possible. Um, depending on the time you're taking from one side of the tire to the other side of the tire, um, it, uh, it it uh, it's a different amount of um, of frames. Uh, it, uh, in the demo, in the demo, on both uh, in both cases, it were around ten uh, frames. Uh, you can also see then in the demo application how many images are, were actually uploaded. And what you will also uh, mention is when you're when you're actually doing a tire thread scanning with the phone, and uh, you stopped the video on the end of the tire, you will see that already a couple of frames have been uploaded. And reason for this is we are starting to upload frames already during the video. So we are really looking into how we can make the process of tire thread scanning as short as possible. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you very much, Phil. Great answer there. Uh, this is a great question. What kind of phone specifications are required for this solution? Yeah, so I will um, uh, share with you all the technical specifications in detail. So we have written them down. Um, in the end, it's a combination of the resolution of the camera. And what's also important, that's the reason why I, I don't want to give you some concrete um, uh, numbers, but it always needs to be uh, in relation, is the focus. Because we are working black on black. And black on black means for some ha hardware that it's difficult to focus. So that's why um, it's it's not that easy to answer in, in one number, but we have a set of uh, technical specifications I'm happy to share with you. So please just, just write me an email, uh, philip.para uh, at uh, anyline.com. Um, and um, uh, we also have a list of recommended devices in, in case um, you are in the mid of a hardware selection. Um, and the last point is, when you have a dedicated device, I'm also happy to test it here in the office, see how good the accuracy is. And also we can uh, look from an engineering perspective, what we can do in terms of optimizing it. Great. Thank you very much, Philip. Uh, another question came through, how does the machine learning model cope with different ambient lighting conditions? As an example, indoor versus outdoor, does it affect the measurement accuracy based on these conditions? Yeah, this is a topic that um, we looked long uh, into it. So that's a good question. Um, in the end, we want to make it as much independent as possible from the um, uh, environment condition. And how we uh, are able to do this is uh, we are by default using the flashlight of um, the, the device. So uh, that's actually something that's uh, a mandatory in the device specification list that you have a flashlight. Um, with the flashlight and the distance to the tire, we in majority of cases get enough controlled light on the object so that we are not dependent on uh, this is uh, the, the, the surrounding lights uh, should be good. So in the end, uh, we have, for example, uh, here a garage where we are regularly testing releases and we are switching off the light. And then we are looking how good the tire tread scanner uh, performs also in that case. Uh, so flashlight is a very important um, requirement for the devices in order to tackle exactly this. Perfect. Thank you very much. We had a question about the uh, interface and how it re returns three values. Is it always the case where it returns three values, no matter the number of grooves in the tire? And additionally, is it possible to get the location where the groove was measured in relation to the width of the tire? 
Uh, yes. Uh, so uh, in the moment, that's the, the way how the product is designed. So uh, we are segmenting the tire always in three segments. And if there are grooves on in one, multiple grooves in one segment, so two grooves in one segment, we are calculating the average of this segment. Uh, but we are also looking together with customers in having a, a more granular approach. So um, if, if you have a specific requirement on how much measurement points you actually need, uh, please also reach out to me. But what we have seen in terms of assessing the tire tread depth, three segments are, um, are perfect to, to get a robust result. Um, the second question was around uh, the location. So um, I assume uh, you mean the, the, the geolocation. Uh, so that's that's an, a good advantage actually of the of the solution as it's integrated into an Android application. You can use the full power of what your all the Android APIs and libraries that are available. So one is very easy to use uh, the, the the GPS coordinates of the device in case you have GPS, um, or you could use the IP address if you have want to use a more broader uh, area where you actually uh, where, where actually uh, the scan happened. So there are multiple um, ways you can use in the in the traditional app development. Um, just for um, the uh, for the SDK that we are providing, so we are solely focusing on giving you those data capturing results. Could be the tire tread depth, could be anything else that we mentioned before, tire sidewall information, license plate, and so on. And we, by intention, don't have any plugins that uh, give you back the geolocation uh, because that that's actually something uh, referring to the uh, couple of questions before that would be then a GDPR topic if we would calculate those uh, on our side. And it doesn't make sense because they are fully available in the app development process anyway. Perfect, thank you very much. We have a number of questions pouring in about integration costs and price, and I think we can direct that as a whole uh, because we don't want to obviously answer each individual one there. So, Philip Christian, as a general concept for pricing, uh, can we maybe give a comment or two on that? Yes, of course. So um, uh, AnyLine has a recurring revenue model. So uh, that means uh, th there are annual um, contracts and on an annual base, uh, we are uh, uh, agreeing on a certain amount um, of uh, usage. And that's then for every year. And that includes not only the SDK, but also the services. So one price includes also future updates and so on and so forth. The way how we are calculating the amounts uh, is based on two metrics. So it could e even even uh, it could uh, be a per scan or a per device metric. That depends on how you actually um, use your um, uh, solution. So what we want to do is uh, we want to be as close as possible to your business model. So if it's easier to count through the devices, um, we have a per device based pricing for you. If it's easier to count the number of cars where you actually want to perform mobile data capturing, uh, we will look into this together with you and we have a per scan uh, model also available. Perfect, an interesting question came through about abnormal tire wear. Are we able to detect abnormal wear, chunks missing from sections? How does the technology work in that respect? Uh, this is something uh, that's not part of the uh, initial um, SDK, but we are we are looking into this. We are looking into this, um, and uh, uh, also this is something I'm very interested to understand more in detail. What you actually want to to know? In the end, what we have seen already with multiple uh, projects that have started is that the tire tread depth in that granularity and quality is a, is a very powerful tool, especially because of this world first mobile approach where you have the data immediately available. So what I mean with this is uh, on one slide before I actually showed a reporting and below that you have seen um, uh, some, some uh, balancing uh, suggestions because what we could see is that there is a, an abnormal behavior between the four tires and that could be an indication that something with balancing is not right. Uh, and that is something we are looking more and more into it so that we are able to give you a very professional diagnostic tool uh, that delivers you insights above just the tire tread depth. Perfect. Thank you very much. Okay. We had a question about uh, how are you calculating the width 
of the tire from 2D data source. He had assumed that you would be using the tire width as a known distance as part of the depth calculation. Does the user need to enter the tire size prior to scanning the tread depth? Well, that's that's um, that's a very uh, good question. Um, at the moment, not. So we don't uh, uh, enter the tire size information. In the end, how we are doing it is uh, uh, we are um, calculating based on the focus point the distance to the tire and we through this distance okay distance to close distance to far approach we keep the user at the right distance to the tire and the distance to the tire in combination with the calculation of where the tire starts and where the tire ends gives us an indication how good the width is and that's that is that is not 100 percent Con uh, um, uh, concrete. Uh, of course, if you would enter the tire uh, size information, uh, that would be even more concrete, but it's enough to give back an accurate result of the uh, tire tread depth. Do we want to use the tire dimension scanning in the future um, for getting the width and don't work too, too much with the focus point? Perhaps. This is something we are looking into it. At the moment, we want uh, not because we see it's already sufficient enough, but we want to keep it as simple as possible for the user, and we also push the boundaries for the for the, the accuracy. So it could be that for some devices, uh, we want to enable entering the tire dimensions as well to get an even better accuracy results. If you have more interest in understanding how the technology actually works, uh, please also reach out to me. I'm, I'm happy um, also to directly connect you uh, with the ones who are uh, developing the, uh, have developed the, the logic behind. Perfect. Thank you very much, Philip. A question about the audio interface. Is it only available in English or can that be localized by the user of the API? Um, so this will be uh, also available uh, uh, to be localized, and you can also in the SDK use them for your own um, uh, user feedback. Perfect. Thank you very much. Are the tires linked to the vehicle so that you can track the tire with that vehicle? I think it's a great question. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's where the whole AnyLine suit is uh, delivering the full strength. So we have these different plugins, and you can use just the plugin tire tread depth scanning. Then you get back the results tire tread depth every time you're calling it in your application. But you can also use the other components. And one component that is very regular used is identifying the car. Identifying the car with the option of identifying the vehicle identification number or the license plate. And uh, with this in mind, what you can actually do is you can combine them, those solutions to, do, to deliver exactly what you uh, were asking for. So it's a two-step process. Uh, first process is identifying the cars through the VIN, um, optionally the license plate. Then you have identified the car. You can immediately look in your database if this is already an existing customer, and you can get all the information from the backend system that you have available at the at the moment when the workforce employee is actually performing uh, the, 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 uh, the, the data capturing, and then you're using the tire thread depth scanner. And for the tire thread depth scanner, uh, you can also uh, very easily um, uh, make a, a workflow where you actually select what kind of tire are you now measuring so that you actually get four measurement points and you can include the tire side wheel information. So from very small, um, implementation where you're using just one scanning capability towards combining all of them your business context. Perfect. Thank you very much for that. What's the influence on the app usage on phone battery? That's a very relevant question for the workforce. So um, in the end, what, what, um, what is happening is um, that we are, um, the, the most battery drain comes from the camera. Uh, so what we need to do in terms of uh, implementation is to look 
how the integration is working, uh, because that um, uh, is significant, especially for heavy users, that we keep the period where the scan view is open, namely where the camera is actually active, is as uh, short as possible. But that in mind, um, let me tell you a couple of other use cases uh, where uh, AnyLine is in use. So one is, for example, in uh, in, in Munich uh, parking management. So uh, people are ch checking the if, if the park, if, if the car parks in the right places. Uh, this is a workforce which from the morning till the evening uh, is, is doing license plate scanning all the time. Um, police um, uh, organizations worldwide are using any line, uh, identifying people, identifying um, cars. And that's where we have develop our, our SDK in the most economic way possible uh, so that we are we are reducing the battery train as much as possible. But we also, and that's maybe something that's uh, important in that, in that context, have a professional services team who is happy to analyze together with you the source code, look into it and optimize it uh, in terms of the, if it's heavy usage and where we can save battery time. Great, thank you very much for that, Philip. Um, we also touched earlier on the conditions of mud and snow. What about wet conditions? I think that's really relevant for the road. How does the wet conditions affect measurement accuracy currently? So um, this is something um, that we have also used in our training set so that we identify uh, wet conditions and there it's always also about reflection and mirroring. Good thing about this is we have learned a lot from our past scanning capabilities like the wind scanner where the main obstacle that we had to overcome is how to rule out the uh, reflections so we are taking also this into consideration of course the the the, the worse the conditions are the higher is the 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 the, the, the uh, or the, the, the lower is the accuracy but still it will be in an area where you, you will consider it as an accurate scan Perfect. Uh, we had a question come in about whether the scanning could be done offline. I think we addressed that earlier that this is server-based, but anything additional to add for that specific question? Yeah, so um, in, in those cases, if you're if you're concerned about offline, online usage, uh, please, please reach out to me. And um, I also want to understand in detail your environment and uh, the scanning functionalities that you want to integrate, because it really depends on the on the capabilities that you want to use, if it's offline or online. But in general, if we're talking about the tire thread scanner, we need a server to process the information. Just because of the heavy load of the work. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much for that, Philip. All right, we are continuing to get questions through and we're going to go for another few minutes here. Uh, but please do continue to share. Uh, we're going to throw our emails up on the screen now, just in case you do have something direct. Um, and I know we've mentioned our emails a few times, so you can jot those down while we continue here. Okay, perfect. Will the solution be able to detect abnormal shoulder wear on the edge of the tire? I think that's relevant to how we capture the different uh, treads. Philip? Uh, not yet, uh, but it's it's part of, um, it, it could be um, a part of a retraining. So in those cases, um, please reach out to me individually. Um, let's have a look at the data and then we will see how our, our model reacts to it. And if we could um, also solve this with the, um, uh, with the current uh, solution that we are providing. Great, thank you very much. Okay, let's continue down the list. Some more pricing questions. I think we've addressed that as well. We have a question from someone who joined just a little bit later. And I should mention that if you are joining this and you have registered, you will be sent the full recording, which you can watch and share with colleagues. And I have received a couple notifications of an unsecure internet connection. So I apologize if my voice has been cutting in and out. Hopefully you're getting the answers that you need. And again, if you're not, or you have additional questions, the emails are up on the screen and you can of course, email us directly. Okay. Continuing on with the questions that we continue to get in. Is there anything that may come in the future where scratches on wheels can be identified and recorded prior to that new tire being fitted? A great future development uh, question on the topic. 
Yeah, so this is definitely something um, uh, we are looking into. So uh, damage detection, um, it's not yet available, but it's an evolving portfolio and we have a very strong focus on the automotive aftermarket. So I wouldn't wonder that, that this is something that is coming up in the future. Uh, but as of today, uh, no. Um, that being said, in the case when you have such a requirement, I am very interested to understand it in detail uh, because what I have learned from different projects in the past is that the complexity is different from project to project. So there are some customers out there that just want to have a classification of four types of um, damages. Uh, and there are some customers that are coming with a, a folder, uh, 40 pages of different uh, damage labels. And this, of course, is this makes it different uh, to, uh, in the product development and also as a, a potential future product. Um, so if you have such kind of requests, um, uh, please ping me and I'm happy to understand it in detail so that I can learn if we can solve this future need from you as well. Great. Thank you very much for that, Philip. I think really well answered. All right. We're going to address one final question before we wrap things up. Just obviously cautious of everyone's time here. And again, the emails are on the screen. If you do have additional questions, please do feel free to send them through and we will be in touch with you directly. And if I didn't get to your question today, I apologize. We do have quite a bit coming through still. Uh, we'll work to work through those after the recording um, if you've submitted them non anonymously. All right, so the final question we're going to go for today is about the camera movement. So can tread depth measurements be made with the camera in a static position with the tire moving towards the camera, or is it necessary to scan across the width of the tire as we showed in the demo earlier? Um, so uh, a static camera and moving the tire is a bit difficult um, because we need to go from one side to the other side. I mean, if that would be possible to somehow arrange, of course, uh, uh, that, that then it, it, it's solvable because it doesn't matter if I move the camera or the tire. Uh, but that being said, um, I have at the moment a customer request uh, where um, we uh, where a static system should read the tire uh, tread depth, and the way how we are uh, trying to approach this at the moment is to use just multiple cameras from different angles because then we can control the distance to the cameras and because of the arrangement of different cameras from different angles uh, we would even have a more controlled environment than the mobile environment and then it would be solvable so uh, not, nothing out of the box not not the um the the, the primary focus of the uh, solution that we have launched now because that's the mobile tire tread scanning solution but the way how it is designed it's definitely something we can also look into especially when it comes to um reading tire tread depth in the static system um that could be a professional services project Perfect. Thank you very much for those great answers, Philip. And again, thank you to everyone for submitting those questions. Uh, again, if you do have something you want to reach out to with us specifically, then please feel free. Uh, emails are on the screen now. So with that, we'll end this session. Uh, again, thank you very much for joining this webinar today. It was great to have all of you with us today so we could showcase this great technology. If you do want to learn more about our solutions as a whole, uh, please do get in touch with us. Uh, we'll be in contact with those who we couldn't address the questions of today. A big thank you to my colleagues, Philip and Christian, for their great presentation and demos today, and as well to all of you for joining. My name is Mark Babin. Thank you so much for joining this AnyLine webinar. We'll see you on the next one very soon. Goodbye for now.